Hello, 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 everyone. We are getting started, so please get your drink, find your seat. My name is Isolde Honoré. Uh, I'm one of the organizers of this event, and it is my delight and privilege to announce and introduce Casey Crowell to the stage, a longtime founding member member of Odd Salon. Uh, back, in, back when we started this in 2014, my very first salon that I ever went to, she spoke at about the, uh, the, the street names of San Francisco and the, and the ladies that inspired their names. And she has talked about salami and, and disasters and setting things on fire. And she is our resident ship expert working on tall ships. So we are thrilled that she is taking the stage today to curate the, her first uh, six talk odds launch. She's done sea shanties aboard the Lady Washington and the Hawaiian Chieftain, which is, has been amazing. So uh, I, I'm so excited to announce the curator, Casey Crowell. Please give her a big hand. Thank you for doing this, Casey. <laughs> Hi there, everyone. Thank you for the warm welcome. All right, good evening and welcome to a night of risk. My name is Casey and I will be your guide for this evening as we dive into stories about sports, stunt women, spaceflight, and the very institutions built on risk itself. But before we get started, who's here for the first time? Raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your hand. It's so hard to see. New people, fresh blood, yes, yes. You may be wondering what you've gotten yourself into. You may also be wondering how this all works. Well, here at Odd Salon, we are a community of amateurs and experts with a passion for sharing weird stories about history, art, science, and adventure. Oh, they're getting it. Our stage is open to you. So this is a participatory project. Our stage is your stage. It takes very little to be up here doing what I'm doing. If you have a story that you'd like to share and you'd like to speak, go to oddsalon.com speak. And also join our email list. It's a great way to stay in touch and keep and kind of know what we're doing. Uh, we post about brainstorming sessions, upcoming themes, all that good stuff. You also don't have to put your phone away, please. Tweet, Instagram, swipe right on Tinder, whatever it is that you do, do it here, do it on your phone. And uh, our, oh yeah, Harvey should get a Tinder account. Uh, we're on Twitter at Odd Salon, hashtag learn something weird or hashtag Odd Salon. Just tag us, we'll find you. Also, you're more than welcome to join our group on Facebook. Our Facebook group is Something Weird. You may hear, uh, hear us refer to this group a lot. Come join the discussion. We're always posting about whatever's on our mind, whatever we think is interesting. Uh, it gets weird, which is why it's called Something Weird. All right, and on the note of participation, this is not a quiet lecture series. We actually have a series of callbacks that have kind of taken on a life of their own. It's a little, little terrifying. So here are some fan favorites. There you go. And for tonight, risk. I love this sign. I actually just went to a friend's uh, secret robot lab, and this sign was legitimately posted on a bunch of their, their equipment, which I love. Okay, so about risk. I just wanna say that if you have made it here tonight, congratulations. You have survived an incredibly risky day. If you're sitting here today, it means that you got out of bed successfully. Unlike the 130 people a year who are killed doing exactly that. If you are sitting here today, it means that you survive showering. Unlike the roughly 16,000 people a year who die from shower rate of related falls. If you're sitting here today, it means you managed to not kill yourself while cooking breakfast. Unlike the roughly 17,000 people injured in grilling and cooking accidents annually. Additionally, 2,000 people a year are injured while trying to pry apart frozen foods. <laughs> so a round of applause to you, you risk takers. Now, I think about risk a lot 
because I tend to participate in some pretty risky activities. I play with fire, I occasionally play with black powder, I work on boats for a living. There you go. So, <laughs> catches, brigs. I think about risk a lot because I tend to take more risks than most people. And I also spend a lot of time thinking about how to make the activities that I'm doing less risky. I'm actually no fun to be around when I'm running fire art or handling black powder. I just take this stuff really seriously. I'm all about personal protective equipment from life jackets to hearing protection to eye protection to wearing non-flammable clothing. I know, right? So, <laughs> oh. so unsurprisingly, I would like to say, uh, share a sailing-related story to get the ball rolling on risk. Now, if you've seen Mutiny on the Bounty or are in any way, shape, or form a nautical history nerd, you're probably familiar with the voyage of the HMS Bounty. And you're probably thinking, duh, Casey, sailing in the 1700s was risky. You had to deal with rough weather, you risked mutiny, scurvy, But the bounty that I'm talking about is the bounty that was built in 1960 and sank in Hurricane Sandy in 2012. I know, sorry, it's gonna be a little bit of a bummer, this one. Uh, so I've been thinking about the bounty a lot because we're nearing the sixth anniversary of her sinking. It was an event, a tragedy, that took the lives of both Captain Robin Walbridge and deckhand Claudine Christian. I want to preface this by saying that while I think this is a deeply interesting case study and risk assessment, I'm not going to stand here and speculate on the captain's motivations or decision-making process that led him to sail into a hurricane. He's not here to defend himself and ultimately paid the biggest price that he could, and we're never going to really know what was going on in his mind, so I'm not going to pretend to even speculate. What I do know is that I sailed with people who worked on Bounty, including one former shipmate who was on her when she went down and survived. The boat had a reputation in the tall ship community as being a little long in the tooth and suffering the kind of decay that you might expect a 50-year-old wooden ship to suffer. One friend of mine goes so far as to refer to his time on Bounty as his enrollment in the, quote, Bounty School of Damage Control. <laughs> tall ship sailors, we have dark humor. Even if the bounty was a little long in the tooth, the fact is that even in a hurricane, sailing on the modern version of bounty was on paper much less risky than if you were on the 1700s version. Uh, this one was equipped with engines and electric bilge pumps. The ship was equipped with a full array of life-saving equipment, including cold water survival suits and emergency life rafts. And in truth, that equipment is the only reason why we still have 14 people to share this story. But how could this tragedy even happen in an era of up-to-the-minute weather predictions and storm mapping? Well, according to the NTSB, Captain Walbridge's, quote, reckless decision to sail into the well-forecasted path of Hurricane Sandy was the direct contributing cause to the sinking. He took a risk, and he paid the ultimate price. But what about the rest of the crew? Did they fully understand the risk that they were taking when they left the dock for that voyage? The captain had decades of sailing experience on ships like Bounty in all sorts of weather, but many of the crew had only been sailing for a couple years. For a number of them, Bounty was actually their first boat that they'd ever worked on. This brings up a bigger question. Where do we get the idea that an activity might be risky? In basic risk management training, the first step is to identify the risk of the activity that you're about to participate in. But with something as complex and niche as sailing a traditionally rigged ship, where do you even begin to have a point of reference if you're new? If you were an inexperienced deckhand, it would be ridiculous to expect you to critically assess every factor that made this voyage a risky venture. In the command structure of a ship, those green deckhands shouldn't have to be the ones assessing that risk. Ultimately, the captain is in charge of the safety of their crew. And from everything I've heard with, from friends who sailed with Walbridge, that responsibility was something that he did take really seriously. Before they sailed, Captain Walbridge called an, an all-hands meeting on board at the capstan. At that point, multiple crew had received worried text messages and phone calls from their family who knew that the boat was planning to sail. Captain Walbridge told the crew that the boat could take it, but that they were free to leave if they wanted to. A few moments of silence passed. With no objections or people speaking up, the captain gave the command to get underway. 
In the old days of sailing ships, that kind of meeting would have been enough. In the 1700s, the mates and the crew obeyed the captain unquestioningly and would have been expected to put their lives on the line for the ship. But this is not the old days. These days, licensed officers are expected to be versed in what's called bridge resource management. Essentially, it's shipboard risk assessment. In BRM, the officers and the crew are not only encouraged to collaborate or voice their concerns, but they're obligated to. They work with the captain to create a sail plan that reflects a common goal and takes into, uh, into consideration any possible challenges. But this capstan meeting was not that. The captain had one plan, to tough it out and skirt the edge of the storm. The chief mate's strategy had been to stay put. The second mate had laid out an alternate voyage plan, but that had long been abandoned. So they had no shared model and no critical assessment of the risk of the thing that they were about to do and with no discussion about how things had already kind of gone off track. So the crew really only had one thing to hinge their decision about taking on this risk, the proven and trusted experience of their captain. If that was the only thing that I had to go on and I was still a green deckhand, I think I probably would have stayed on board too. I'd like to invite you to think back on the stats at the beginning of this invocation. Did you know that it was so risky to get out of the shower? Did you know it was so risky to get out of bed? Are you now mildly afraid of prying apart the frozen chicken breasts in your freezer? <laughs> Whether you're getting out of bed or making the decision to go sailing on a tall ship, I invite you to critically investigate the risks of the things that you participate in. I don't wanna live in a world where we're all so paralyzed with the fear of ta taking risks that we don't get out of bed or don't go sailing on ships. But I do think it's healthy for us to do what we can to question the risks that we take and quite frankly, take better risks. So I'd like to close this little speech with a, an invocation, a quote from T.S. Eliot. Only those who risk going too far can possibly find out how far one can go. All right, I would like to welcome our speakers for tonight. We have Crystal Riley, Willow Brew, John Adams, first time speaker, Nathan Parker. Woo!